tube amplifiers are an interesting thing. Objectively, not as accurate as most solid state options, but that's exactly why people love them. The coloration that tube amps impart onto the sound is something that many people adore, and for a while now, Woo Audio has been one of the biggest names in tube headphone amplifiers. Though previously their products had mostly been in the form of full size, sometimes pretty massive desktop amps, until now. This is the Woo Tube Mini, and it is a balanced DAC and tube amplifier in the size of a small chocolate bar. It retails for $4.99, you can use it on the go with a phone, and I really like it. Personally, I've really enjoyed most of the Woo Audio products that I've tried. The Wa 23 in particular is still one of my absolute favorite tube-based headphone amps, period. And the Woo Phantom DAC was an interesting one. It gave a slightly tubey sound thanks to a distortion profile that mimics tubes to a degree, even though it is a solid state device. But there's not really been many portable, let alone dongle sized tube products, and the ones that do exist, I have generally found not to be very good. But this one, this is particularly good. Now before we get into it, if you are looking for an objectively well-performing, neutral, transparent device, close this video and have a look at some options like a Chord Mojo 2 instead. This is not a neutral sounding device, and as with many other tube-based products, it has high levels of harmonic distortion and other objective behaviours that do colour the sound. This is not for the person that is looking for the most accurate source or transparent sounding source, this is for the kind of person that is looking for the sound of a tube amp in their pocket. Given as this is a somewhat unusual type of product, tubes in a portable device, let's start by talking about some of the challenges that we usually see with tube headphone amplifiers and how the Tube Mini handles them. The first of which is noise. Many tube amplifiers will have some level of noise, hiss or hum that for sensitive headphones or in-ear monitors for example, can be audible. They are generally noisier devices than solid state ones, but in that regard the Tube Mini does actually do pretty decently. When you're using this just as a portable DAC outputting to a separate amp, it's got about a 91 dB signal to noise ratio, which means you'll have almost 16 bits of noise free range. So that's pretty ideal. Same goes if you are using over ear headphones and you've got it turned up most of the way. The only time it's really going to be a concern is if you are wanting to use IEMs. Outputting a 50 millivolt signal, so more typical of what you'd put to sensitive IEMs, it's about a 50 dB signal to noise ratio, which is 30 dB less than a Chord Mojo 2. So with many IEMs, you may find that there is some level of audible hiss on this. I would not really recommend getting this if you are an IEM user unless you have particularly difficult to drive IEMs. The output impedance is low though at 0.2 ohms, so you won't have to worry about it actually changing the frequency response of your headphones or IEMs. For those who don't know, amplifiers with high output impedance, as tube amps often have, will actually change the frequency response of both dynamic driver headphones and many in-ear monitors. In fact, some products use impedance adapters to do this on purpose, like the Truth Ear Red with its bass boost impedance adapter. The next challenge is microphonics. Tubes themselves actually pick up vibrations and pass that sound through to the output. So if you tap on your tube amplifier, you usually hear a ringing sound coming through your headphones. And that's a bit of a problem for a device where it's intended to be portable, potentially being moved around in your pocket. But the Tube Mini has an interesting way of alleviating this problem to a large degree with a suspension system for the tubes. It has them loaded on springs that damp some of the vibrations and help to ensure that you don't get a ton of ringing or other noise coming through. And I've generally found that this system does work quite well, though it doesn't fix the problem entirely. When I was using this with my phone and just had it in my pocket, the action of walking around and actually taking steps would sometimes cause ringing to still come through if I was using more sensitive headphones, though when I was just holding it in my hand with my phone, it was no issue. So what about the non-tube related stuff? In terms of power, the Tube Mini delivered about 250 milliwatts at 32 ohms, which means you're probably not going to be running harder to drive planars on this, but for just about any dynamic driver headphone or some more sensitive planars like a ZMF Caldera, you'll be fine. It's got balanced and single-ended outputs with a selector to switch between them and volume control buttons on the side. These don't actually control any internal DSP, they just instruct your device itself to alter its own volume, but it's still nice to have, as well as a play pause button. The body of the device is a nicely finished matte surface with a window on either side to show off the tubes themselves. The choice to go with a male USB-A connector though is the one thing about the build that I'm unfortunately not so keen on. Given the size of the device, I don't think there's going to be many people plugging it directly into a laptop, if anything, just because it kind of needs a bit of strain relief. And it's male USB-A, so you can't connect it directly to a phone. So I don't think there's going to be many people using this without the included A to C adapter. 
And for that reason, I don't really know why they didn't just go with a USB-C port on the device itself. That would have cut down on the size of adapter you have to carry around. You could just use your own A to C or C to C cables. It would have just made a lot more sense. Definitely would have preferred to see a USB-C port on there. I imagine that the reason they did do this is because they have a power base accessory for the Tube Mini, but they could have just put a male USB-C connector on the power base anyway. Enough talking about the build though. How does it sound? Well, in a sentence, warm but incisive. This, in comparison to a Mojo 2, is notably warmer. The sound is overall more dense and mid-range focused than neutral, which is exactly what you'd expect and might be looking for if you're considering getting yourself one of these. But I also say incisive because a lot of tube-based products I find go a little bit too far into that warm and dense kind of sound, and as a result, they lose the ability to provide proper detailed sounding treble or provide quick and snappy sounding cymbals and snares, for instance, whereas this does not. It strikes a nice balance of giving you prominent tube flavour without being overly soft or muddy. Now, this is not quite as resolving as a Chord Mojo 2. The Chord Mojo 2, in most technical performance aspects, is a bit better, and that also includes things like the ability to separate busy mixes. Listening to Pain by The War on Drugs, for instance, the ability to just focus on one particular thing and not have other elements in the quite busy mix obscure your ability to just listen and hear every little bit of detail of that particular instrument is a bit better on the Mojo 2. This does get a little bit more congested when you're listening to busier tracks, but it's not doing bad. It's still doing a pretty good job, and it is leagues ahead of the Little Bear portable tube amp, which I also have on hand to test. Listening to the two of these when A-being, the Tube Mini was clearer, staged bigger, it was more resolving, and slightly less warm than the Little Bear. The Little Bear does exactly what I mentioned a moment ago. It goes way too far into that warm and stereotypically tubey sort of sound, and just ends up being muddy. It means that for busier tracks like Pain by the War on Drugs, you can't really focus on one particular element once lots of stuff is playing at once. And it also means that for tracks with more high frequency content and airiness to them, it doesn't really have the same sense of space. Best Behaviour by Mansion Air is a good example of a track which shows this quite well. On the BX4, the vocals sound lovely, they are warm and lush, but the sense of space and air and environment is not really there. There's not really much clarity to the sound on the BX4. Whereas you swap back to the Tube Mini, and it just kind of feels like the music can breathe openly again. This aspect of the sound could potentially just be explained by the harmonic distortion profile. Most tube amplifiers will have a very heavily second order dominant distortion profile, which can make things sound very warm. Whereas the Tube Mini actually has almost the same level of third order harmonics, at least for higher level signals as it does second order. And I found on other products that this tends to balance out that warmth with a little bit more bite to the sound. It also has a fairly flat distortion profile versus frequency, so you don't get a rise into the high frequencies that can sometimes make things sound softer. This product sits in a fairly unique spot in the market. Most dongle DACs are fairly similar in design, actually, and almost all of them give a fairly neutral, sometimes slightly even thin presentation, but this does exactly what it sets out to do, giving you the sound of a tube amp in your pocket. It's warm, lush, it does add some of that holographic nature to the sound, which is really enjoyable for tracks that have more of a soundstage to them. And whilst doing so, it still retains enough bite and actual detail retrieval to make well-mastered tracks sound great. It may not be quite as technically proficient as a Chord Mojo 2, but it doesn't feel like you're making a huge trade-off of technical performance to get this sort of tuning. The closest I can think of in sound to this is probably the Questar CMA18P, though that's considerably more expensive, and whilst also a bit warmer than neutral in sound, it doesn't quite give you the same euphonic effect that tube amps have a reputation for and that the Tube Mini delivers on. That's more of a product for the kind of person that wants a great sounding solid state device with a little bit of sweetness to the sound, whereas the Tube Mini is for the person that wants full tubiness on the go. The price is fairly steep, and that's the main aspect which I'm not entirely sure how to conclude on. For most people, the majority of listeners, I do think that a Chord Mojo 2 is probably going to be a better purchase. That is more transparent sounding, it is higher performance from an objective standpoint and in the subjective technicalities, but whilst having the EQ built in does allow you to tune things to your liking, there is just something about the coloration imparted by tubes 
that can be really enjoyable to listen to, and is why tube amps are still so prevalent today. And given as this is the only product I'm aware of that offers that sound without having to either pay three times the price for something like a Cayenne C9, or making very significant sacrifices in terms of actual sound quality for something like a Little Bear, perhaps the price is about right. I really like the Tube Mini. You do need to know that this tubey coloration is what you're looking for. It is not a case of outright better or worse than something like a Mojo 2, because they're simply not trying to do the same thing. But if you want a warmer, lusher, more holographic sound at the expense of a little bit of technical performance, the Tube Mini is a fantastic option. I hope you enjoyed that video, and if you did, hit the subscribe button. In fact, if you don't, I will come to your house and tangle up all of your headphone cables. If you've got any questions you wanted to ask about tube amps or anything else to do with music or gear, then head on over to the Headphones.com Discord server, and I and other Wiggly Air enthusiasts will endeavour to help. Or come and say hey on the Headphones.com forum. I'm Golden Sound. You're watching the Headphone Show by Headphones.com. I'll see you next time. <laughs>